This is Self Work, and I'm Dr. Margaret Rutherford. At Self Work, we'll discuss psychological and emotional issues common in today's world and what to do about them. I'm Dr. Margaret, and Self Work is a podcast dedicated to you taking just a few minutes today for your own self work. Hello, and welcome to Self Work. I'm Dr. Margaret Rutherford. This past week has been a very difficult one for many, as two very prominent people in our culture died by suicide. So I wanted to do kind of a special edition of self-work today, just to reach out to those of you who may have been affected or triggered in some way. So although we've done other episodes about suicide, 74 talked about whether or not suicide is predictable, 52 talked about how to care for yourself if someone you know committed suicide, This episode is going to tie together not only suicide, but perfectionism and what I term perfectly hidden depression. And I fervently believe that there's one question that we need to ask each other all the time, and that question has to do with vulnerability. So please listen if you're triggered by your own depression. Listen if you're triggered by your fear for someone else. And I hope this is helpful to you. We are going to do a listener email today. It's from a man in his 30s who had several important relationships break up and is feeling a lot of shame and failure and depression. I do want to offer a trigger warning because we will talk openly about suicide. So please, if you listen, listen with care. And I have included the suicide hotlines for both the United States and the United Kingdom in the show notes. Kate Spade was renowned for her taste and her rock star creativity. A whole generation of women were caught up in carrying her bags or wearing her latest garb. From the news reports, it sounds like she was a genuine caring person, a very loving mom, and someone whose marriage was important to her. Anthony Bourdain, just as acknowledged in his own field, was known for his vivid curiosity and sense of adventure, as well as culinary expertise. I saw one tweet where a friend had called him, a symphony. No one now who loves either one of them wants to remember them for how they died. Their lives epitomized what many people dream of, extremely hard work that had culminated in wealth, status, recognition, respect, even fame. They both got to the top of their game, but there were obviously mostly hidden vulnerabilities, secret destructive thoughts that led them both to suicide. We've been told that Kate Spade was being treated for depression and anxiety. We don't know exactly what that means. Anthony Bourdain is described by his longtime friend, Eric Rippert, as having had recent dark thoughts. But nobody's attention, nobody's help, no one's knowledge was enough to keep them alive. There's some general facts about depression that may surprise you. As many news reports have said, It's rising in prominence in the world. It's considered by the World Health Organization to be the second most serious issue internationally. Suicide is increasing at alarmingly strong rates. And again, that's internationally. And it's not a disorder that has one cause. That's in many ways what makes it difficult. Its presentation can be unique from person to person. One of those presentations is what I've termed perfectly hidden depression, Since writing and speaking about perfectly hidden depression, so many people have contacted me about what they've been hiding for so long. Early trauma or abuse that has stayed a secret, rigid, punitive families where sadness, disappointment, or grief weren't even allowed to be expressed. Taking care of alcoholic parents whose need swallowed your own. Feeling as if perfection or being the star of your family was the only way to be loved and valued. Or perhaps you were loved conditionally, where you had to meet the high expectations of parents or risk rejection. These and many other paths can lead to the choice to hide or the need to look perfect, where all the while there is a darkness underneath that no amount of success can soothe. Again, what I term perfectly hidden depression. And there are episodes on that, the first ones being three and four, the rest interspersed throughout self-work. So when we consider perfectly hidden depression, it brings up an issue. Are we asking the right questions that might determine if someone would kill themselves? 
We hear experts reminding us of what to look for in depression, isolation, not enjoying things that were previously enjoyed, a noticeable depressed mood. But that wasn't true for Anthony Bourdain or Kate Spade. The question is about vulnerability. Do you, can you allow others to see that you're struggling? Can you talk about that struggle? Can your friends or your loved ones do so? Is that what you learned in your family? If perfectly hidden depression is present, it's a question that must be answered. And because for perfectionists or people with PhD, the answer is no. And if the answer is no, then you wouldn't say you were thinking of hurting yourself either. It's chilling to think about. And now there's more and more research that's backing up this link between perfectionism and suicide. We've known for years that perfectionism, when taken to its limit, is a dangerous trait, not a healthy trait. But we're getting more clear about its potency. You know, I have no idea whether these two people would have called themselves perfectionists. Yet the quality and quantity of their work seems to suggest such. It certainly reflected the seeking of excellence and the desire to engage with life, beauty, and adventure, taking monumental risks along the way. Let's talk a little bit about whether you are triggered or not. If you're triggered in any way by what has happened this week, please reach out to the people you care about. Allow that connection to remind you of what you could lose. Seek treatment if you need it. Risk being vulnerable. People think of vulnerability as weakness, fragility, coming off to other people like you don't know how to live your own life. And that is so untrue. Some of my patients and my own most vulnerable moments are actually when we find our strength. If you're hiding some kind of darkness, if you vow every morning to not only strive your best, but mask your own insecurities and pain, you don't have to. Please allow Kate Spade's and Anthony Bourdain's deaths to show you that fact. There is another way. And vulnerability can lead to immense freedom and power that can be gained from openness. Allow what's happened to help you recognize that emotions and impulses can get way out of hand very quickly. All of us can only take so much pressure. You don't have to be famous to hide. You don't have to have written a cookbook be a TV celebrity, or a fashion savant to feel despair and loneliness. You could be anybody, anywhere, dealing with an imploding depression that's slowly eating away your vitality, although no one can truly see it. Please know that you're not alone. There are others who are hiding, and yet there are also many others who've abandoned perfectionism for honesty and depth of feeling even if initially the feelings are quite painful. It can be done, and it can be done without losing your edge, without losing your creativity. It's simply about allowing your emotions, all of your emotions, to the surface. So our email from a listener today is about breakups and relationship problems and how not to feel like a failure and carry around a sense of being an active target. He says, I first want to say that I greatly enjoy listening to your podcast and have found a lot of comfort and helpful advice. Thanks so much. You are welcome. I'm really struggling with a lot of feelings of shame and hopelessness. I'm 35 years old and have had depression and anxiety for most of my life to varying degrees. I have a lot of shame about my past related to choices I've made and perceived messages from other people that I've internalized. He goes on to tell me about experiences in elementary and middle school where he was bullied, but by high school he was doing better. He moved in with a girlfriend and unfortunately they got mixed up in a cult. They were forced out of the cult and moved back to their hometown so this young man could go to school. Our relationship fell apart, and she ended up jumping into a relationship with my roommate, an old friend. I shut down for years after this while I struggled through college. 
I went to music school, but my professor didn't see much in me because I played rock music, and he only respected classical music and jazz. I took this as further evidence that I was deficient and had some fatal flaw that would ruin everything I tried to do. Then he was seduced by a college therapist. So this guy has had it rough. Then recently, he met a girl. He describes, we had a wonderful relationship, and I've never been happier in my life. We travel together and spend all our free time together. I tried to be cautious, but she would constantly tell me that she loved me more than anything and wanted to move in when her lease was up. I let my guard down completely and started to dream about our future, getting a house, and how I'd ask her to marry me. I was daring to dream of a happier tomorrow and felt I would have someone to love. Then he goes on to describe what happened was she was also in the music business and got a really great opportunity, which led her to decide to move to New York. It all fell apart within a week, and despite my attempts to repair things, it came down to the fact that if I moved to New York, I would resent her, and if she stayed here, she would resent me. The last month of trying to repair things, she stonewalled and was very heartless. It was one of the most painful experiences of my life. I started getting anxiety attacks and was demoted at my job because I couldn't contain my grief and sadness. We said our last goodbye just this week and ended things on good terms, agreeing it wasn't anyone's fault, just circumstances. Now I feel I'm just shutting down. I'm trying to stay positive, but it feels like I don't know how to keep going. I don't know how to find hope anymore. Sometimes it feels like my life is cursed or that I'm just incompetent. I'm going to therapy, taking meds for depression and anxiety. I meditate and am reading books about handling my emotions, which I've always felt very strongly, and doing my best to practice self-compassion. But for some reason, I can't shake the sense of hopelessness and the feeling that based on my past, all I have left to do here is to suffer, lose those I care about, and watch my dreams fade away. How can I better process all this, not let my past define me, and find the courage and strength to keep trying? Obviously, a very difficult question to answer. So I said hello. First, I want to say that grief can feel as if it will never subside, and you're obviously grieving now about your girlfriend. It only happened a few days ago. I'm glad you're in therapy, and hopefully that is helping. It may be hard to trust there, too, since you've had a therapist cross boundaries with you, and that can make it difficult. You asked basically how to be guided internally, not by fear, but by hope. I've watched many people experience tragic loss, and putting one foot in front of the other can sometimes seem impossible. Yet, remember that you've handled other problems in your life, so if you remind yourself of what skills you used then, perhaps you can use them again. You mentioned shame from your past. Not letting your past define you involves compassion and acceptance. If you've listened to my podcasts, I don't believe that mistakes we've made define us any more than our successes or what we deem a success. Just this week, in fact, I worked with a woman who's in her 60s who's finally questioning and letting go of her constant criticism of herself. It's an active, very proactive process. If you meditate, you know about the power of focusing the mind. That's what you do with this kind of change as well. You tune in to what you're thinking and replace those thoughts. But the emotional part is making sure you're not simply describing emotions you feel, but you're expressing them. Very, very different process. It does sound like your emotions are very intense, and that can be wonderful. But when you can't harness them with your mind, it can also be dangerous. You might want to consider doing EMDR, that's Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing Therapy, to help you remember those moments when you feel so much shame and then you can lose, through EMDR, such a strong emotional response to them. You certainly don't want to adopt a sense of being a victim. That will be paralyzing. You've had disappointments and struggles and, not but, and you're trying hard for those struggles not to define you. Good for you. They don't have to unless you allow it. On a personal note, my own life was completely chaotic in my 20s and into my very early 30s. I'd been married and divorced twice at that point. I can remember feeling as if all I had done was make mistake after mistake after mistake. Luckily, and with some hard therapeutic work, I realized the core of what was wrong and gradually began changing that. You can too.
Thank you so much for listening today to Self Work. And thank you also for the wonderful ratings and reviews people are leaving. I cannot tell you how much that means to me and how grateful I am. I'm loving doing this podcast, so it is so meaningful to me to know that people would take the few minutes to let me know what they like or perhaps what they don't like about the episodes so I can grow and learn as a podcaster. For example, I got a review this past week. This podcast has been an invaluable resource in my recovery from a bout of severe depression and relational trauma. I've recommended this podcast to several of my friends now, and my therapist and I have actually had several sessions based around your podcast topics. I love that. And then he says some other really wonderful things. I love the idea that this person is taking the podcast to their own therapy sessions and discussing them. Wow, that is such a compliment. Thank you. So if you have time to leave a review, leave a rating, or just tell a friend, I'd be so appreciative. You can reach out to me in lots of different ways. My email is askdrmargaret at drmargaretrutherford.com, and I will answer you. If you don't want your question or comment used on the air, just let me know, and I will not. My website, where I blog weekly, is drmargaretrutherford.com, and I'd love for you to subscribe over there. If you do, you'll get a newsletter with both my blog post and my podcast episode attached. And by the way, you can get a free copy of my ebook, which is Seven Commandments of Good Therapy, if you do that. It's a basic primer about how to choose a therapist. Again, tell your friends about self work. I had the highest numbers last month that I've had thus far. Thousands of people are downloading self work and from all over the world. So I welcome each and every one of you. I want to learn from you. So write me and let me know what you'd like to hear and what your own experiencing of self-work is like. Take very good care. I'm Dr. Margaret, and this has been Self-Work.